Quadrats are used to investigate the abundance of a species within an area without the need to go out and count every individual organism and get a perfect true value, because it's impossible. Quadrats are typically square shaped and normally have an area of either 0.25 square meters or one square meter. I think it's worth understanding how to calculate the area of a quadrat and to always make sure both lengths of the quadrat are converted into meters to avoid making errors. Examiners like to be cruel and write papers with numeracy skills thrown into the mix. So check your units. Let's take a field that has dandelions growing in it and investigate their abundance. You probably counted daisies in school. We are going to lay out two 20 meter tape measures at right angles to each other to obtain our survey area. The bigger the area you sample of the field, the more confidence that you will have that any estimates you obtain are close to the true value of the number of dandelions in the field. Of course, sampling an entire field would be very time consuming and difficult. Now, in a sense, we have a graph and we could imagine that each one meter square is a coordinate on the graph. At this point, it is important that we sample randomly to reduce bias. I repeat, we sample randomly to reduce bias. Do not use the phrase fair test. Bias sampling would be a situation where you would purposely try to place the quadrat where you see dandelions or where you don't, depending on your motivation. If the field, for example, had a corner that was filled with dandelions and we only sample in that area, when we do our calculation, we would get an overestimation of how many dandelions are in the field. And we would be claiming that the whole field is covered with dandelions with the same abundance as that corner. So to achieve random sampling, we use two 20-sided die and we do our best D&D impression and roll for our coordinates. So one dice is the X coordinate and one dice is the Y coordinate. Using a random number generator is perfectly fine as well. Once we get our coordinates, we place the quadrat there. If half or more of the organism is visibly within the quadrat, and that includes the frame itself, then we count it. If less than half of the organism is within the quadrat, we do not count it. We should repeat this as many times as possible, and we will do it 25 times. Again, this is to increase our confidence in our data and that our estimates are close to the true value. If we have done our best to reduce bias and done a high number of sampling, we can be confident that our conclusion will be valid. Now we have counted a total of 538 dandelions in our sample area. We now use this equation where the total area is divided by the area we sampled multiplied by the number of species counted when sampling. So the total area is 400 meters squared. The area sampled is the area of the quadrat multiplied by how many times we placed our quadrat down and counted. So in this case, 25 times multiplied by one square meter to give us a sample area of 25 square meters. So 400 divided by 25 multiplied by 538 which remember is the number of dandelions we counted. We get an estimate that there are 8,608 dandelions in this 400 meter squared area. We can now use this to try estimate the area for the whole field, which happens to be 40 meters by 40 meters. Now you might say we can just double our 8,608 number to get the estimate for the whole field, but that would be wrong because 40 times 40 is 1,600 square meters. So it's four times the area of a 20 by 20 meter area. So 8,608 multiplied by four is 34,432 dandelions in the whole field. That is our final estimate. It is probably worth being aware of the risk assessment for this practical, as it is a specified practical and here it is from WJEC themselves. Transects are used to show how abundance can change across an area due to certain factors. Biotic factors are things like diseases, predation, and general animal activity, such as trampling. Or we could have abiotic factors, such as water content, soil, pH, and light intensity. We will look at light intensity and dandelion abundance. In this field, there happens to be trees growing at the edge of it, which cast a shadow throughout the day. 
We can place a transect, which is basically a line with a set length placed at the base of the tree to the centre of the field. Now every metre we will use the quadrat and count the number of dandelions and our transect is 10 metres long. So we shall repeat this 10 times. And while we're at it, we could also use a light meter to measure light intensity. You could then plot the data you get where you have distance from the trees on the x-axis and number of dandelions on the y-axis. We could then make some claims as to why we see more dandelions further from the tree and reference our knowledge of light intensity and photosynthesis and so on. In the next lesson, we will look at the principles of capture-recapture techniques.